Good morning, Louise. Good morning, Rob. And good morning to everybody watching this episode of God is Supernatural. As you know, our verse is 1 Corinthians 2, 4. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We're on a mission, aren't we, Louise, to encourage people to be empowered disciples so that they can do the works that Jesus did. Absolutely, absolutely. Which we are seeing, which is great. Um, because really, the only way that you can spread the kingdom well, effectively, is through the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, you're away on Sunday, uh, Louise, uh, on your other job. Um, but I just reminded, well, I just kind of reflected in church that uh, um, the temptation, of course, is that we default to doing it in our own strength um, because we are anxious to see things happen. We want to see results. We want to see the kingdom spreading. Um, and we're not seeing it quite like we want to. So this desire to make it happen comes over us. And that's just code for doing it in our own strength, which is not what we're encouraging you guys to do. Um, you know, that's Abraham and Sarah um, getting their Ishmael and their Isaac. You know, for Ishmael, that's preceded by Sarah absolutely falling into that temptation where she goes up to Abraham and she says, behold, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. So as a result of that, because God is not doing it, I've got a plan. You know, go into my servant. And folks, that's what we do. That's the temptation that falls upon us. We think, behold, the Lord is not doing it. He is asleep or he's on holiday. Um, or I think the, uh, the favorite one that everybody comes up with is that um, God has changed. You know, the way he does things in this world has now changed. So he's now delegated this work to us and now it's up to us to make a plan and to, to make it happen. Um, and folks, we just want to encourage you to resist that. We've got some fantastic testimonies today just to encourage you to uh, keep true to the faith, keep true to the faith that our God is a supernatural God. So we have a wonderful testimony called SMITE, which stands for Street Ministry in the Evening. It might as well be called Supernatural Ministry in the Evening because that's what it does. And Louise, you're a regular on that. And yeah, we've just got a couple of testimonies, haven't we, that are just amazing. I mean, so many of these testimonies on SMITE are amazing. But do you want to just... Um, yeah. You know, just uh, and I background think, and... yeah, just to say before we go into that, it seeing these people in such difficult circumstances you really do want to humanly do stuff um yeah. and you know we we do we do do practical stuff as well but the it's definitely more powerful and, and we'll see this in a minute doing it through the power of the holy spirit alongside giving that practical stuff that they yeah. need there is real temptation to, to want to, you know, make everything all right. But, you know, it's in our human strength. We, we can't do that. No. Um, and, and the truth is what we can do in our human strength is so finite and so limited. I mean, we only just we have only whatever resources we have. Uh, we're always limited. There's always not enough. And actually, if the, if the people don't really want it, um, it, yeah. none, of it, none of it is going to make a the kind of difference that that sees their agency turned around where they become them in themselves the people that they can be yeah uh, and it's certainly for a lot of the people we need we meet it's it is the supernatural power that they need they have addictions strongholds yeah. uh, and it's only that 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 can set them free so yeah yeah so yeah, on to the on to the story. Yes. Yeah, so um first of all, there's a lady that we've been meeting with now for probably around six months. Uh sometimes she goes off the scene for a, a couple of months, but uh she's been back on the scene for, for probably the last three weeks. And it's been 
as we've met her, it's been a real roller coaster time for her. Sometimes she's been in tears, distraught. <clears throat> Other times she's been really happy, and uh, you know, it, it's a difficult life on, on the streets. Yeah. Um, she has MS. Uh, we've given her a, a Bible uh, in the past. One of one of our team members <clears throat> went and bought her a Bible, and you know that really broke her heart. She was in tears when when oh. she received that. But probably three weeks ago now, uh, she was with her boyfriend um, and she was asking for food, a particularly soup. It was a cold night. So, so we gave her that. And as she was sat sipping that, we said, can we pray? And she said, I've got a painful shoulder. So yeah. we, we began to pray for that shoulder. And as we did, um, she felt warmth in it. Um, and her boyfriend had wandered off and came back, saw us praying, and then said, while you're at it, pray for the broken ribs. Right. And she told him to be quiet. For some reason, she, she she didn't want us to know about these broken ribs. But, you know, we said, can, can we pray? And we wonder whether there is some sort of an abusive relationship and it was possibly the boyfriend that, that caused the broken ribs. Yeah. So we did pray. We prayed for her broken ribs as well. Um, again, not 100% healing, but she felt warmth uh, and there was uh, improvement um, yeah. in, in both of those areas. Instant medical care. Absolutely. Supernaturally yeah. on the streets. And she was much happier uh, as a result. Yeah. Um, or because she, the pain... Um, had alleviated to such an extent that she was able to move around a lot more? Yes, yes. Uh, and on that same night, as some of the team stayed with her, she was sat on, on a wall. Her boyfriend had wandered off uh, and was having a cigarette maybe two or three metres away, and I went over to him and just said, would you like some food? Because he hadn't taken anything. Yeah. Uh, and he took food and I said to him, is there anything we can pray for for you? And he was, no, no, uh, I don't receive prayer. I had a really bad experience um, over 20 years ago with Christians and I never accept prayer. So that, yeah. that was fine. We did pray for him as a team anyway, um, but he didn't specifically have um, prayer with us at, at that time. Last Monday night, um, the team went out again. I couldn't make it last Monday, but it, they had an amazing time with this chap. He had seen so much improvement in his girlfriend's injuries that he accepted prayer, but not, not just on that basis. He said that he had also asked God for a sign, um, and he said that he had seen okay, appear in the clouds after he'd asked God for that sign. Fine, and yeah, so it was the, yeah, has, I mean, because Steve was also showing this testimony on Sunday, but he said that he, he said he was looking up in the sky and those clouds formed the word, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just like the biblical time when we see writing appearing on the wall, he, he got his sign, didn't he? So, yeah. He did. It convinced him. <laughs> yeah. So that, that for the first time in, well, I assume over decades, he actually stood uh, and allowed the team to pray for him, which is amazing. We did see him again last night, but the weather was dreadful and everybody was in a hurry. So, you know, we didn't get time to, to pray with him. But God is working in, in both of their lives. Yeah. Um, and on that same night, um, as we were praying, as the team were praying with, with the, this couple, uh, a guy walked past pushing a wheelchair that Steve knew. So he, he shouted hello uh, and they stopped. And then the, the team had opportunity to, to pray with both of these people. So the guy that Steve knew pushing the wheelchair uh, yeah. and the guy in, in the wheelchair as well. Uh, and the guy in the wheelchair, he was very frail. Um, Steve says his limbs were really thin. Um, he could walk and he could stand. But when they asked him what, what he wanted prayer for, he said he had a, a very painful back. 
So yeah. they, they took the opportunity, they laid hands on him and prayed. Steve said they actually prayed six times uh, and he felt real warmth uh, yeah. in his back. They encouraged him to stand after the final time and test where how the pain was. And he said the pain had completely gone. Um, yeah, just... so he stood up, he got up out of his wheelchair. So this would have been great if he'd been unable to walk. <laughs> It would have been even better. It's already great, but it would have been even better uh, because people saw him getting out of the wheelchair and and I can only imagine. Yeah, that would have been a fantastic testimony to have an audience see that. But it's still a a fantastic testimony that, you know, back pain can be so debilitating, can't it? And, uh, yeah, pain completely gone. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I Um, think... Sorry. There you go, going to say that the guy pushing the wheelchair uh some of the members of the team prayed for him and he said that he had um anxiety to the fe- to the extent he was having panic attack- attacks and he also just really felt the peace of the holy spirit and after they prayed for him the panic had all gone as well oh well see, i mean that's also I mean, anyone who suffers from mental health issues, which, you know, that would kind of fall under that umbrella, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, knows just how amazing that is. Yeah. Of those yeah. feelings of anxiety go away, which, because they dominate your life, don't they? Yeah, they can. And, you know, there's lots of techniques that, you know, we're encouraged to use, but that is by far the most, prayer is by far the most powerful one. Yeah. So I, that's, so that's that's three, four, maybe extraordinary um, things just all in all in one night, Louise. You got the lady with her ribs and I mean broken ribs. And yeah. what was the shoulder? Was that was that an injury? Probably. I think it was. She didn't know what it was, but it was painful. Yeah. yeah. So so for that significant improvement, there, that's an amazing physical uh, healing for him to see the sign in the sky and receive prayer um that is amazing and then both the guy in the wheelchair and the guy praying i mean uh yeah people are like ministering angels you guys it is uh it, it is humbling and it's a privilege as well although i have to say it didn't feel much of a privilege last night <laughs> pouring rain but it was still we we it was quiet last night, but it, it's definitely a, a privilege. Yeah. Um, so just a reminder for, for us all then, I think just the power of prayer, that actually we really have something to give when we pray, when we pray for people. Um, more than just words. Actually, what is actually delivered is freedom, is healing, is salvation. Uh, in its in its broadest sense so so folks can we encourage you um if you're interested in stepping into this supernatural life we're actually running our uh introductory training kingdom first year one starts at the beginning of october go on to our website networkvineyard.church uh, go to the events section and why don't you sign up we have uh, lots of lots of forms of training but That's our key one in terms of discipleship training. It'll give you 20 weeks of uh, ongoing training, um, which, which actually, Louise, you've, you've been on it. You helped teach on that as well. Um, Just, just why don't you just share just very briefly the impact that I had on you. Yeah. I, I don't know if you said, but it's online as well. So anybody can do it anywhere in, in the country. But yes, I, I did it a few years ago, um, and I had been a Christian for decades. I believed in miracles. I believed God could heal occasionally. I had prayed for somebody. But the course just makes you realise that that you are God's ambassador. He wants to actually use you, not just occasionally, but in your everyday life. And, you know, he's delegated that power and that authority uh, and he wants to work through you. Um, completely life changing. So it's not not only equips you to do that, 
but they're opportunities um, just to allow the Holy Spirit to move and address issues, which, you know, we all have, we all need inner healing, strongholds, breaking, deliverance. So there's opportunities for that um, in our own personal lives as well. So completely transformational. It is, and it is, and it's not because of the teaching as such, although the content's really good, it's because of the presence of the Holy Spirit um, during those times. He, he's the one who changes us. Um, and folks, that's how we become empowered, by learning to trust and to see the movement of the Holy Spirit and learn to, to minister in his power. So do come along. We would love to um, train you up and see you being released as an empowered minister of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We will see you in a couple of weeks' time or next time. Um, keep on doing the work. <laughs>